The problem of how to teach a child in such a way that he can use the material appropriately breaks down into six sub-problems. First is the attitude problem. How do you arrange learning in such a way that the child recognizes that when he has information, he can go beyond it? That there is a connection between the facts that he has learned with other data and situations? He must have the attitude that he can use his head effectively to solve a problem. Discovery teaching involves not so much the process of leading students to discover what is out there, but rather the discovering what is in their own heads. That when he has a little bit of information, he can extrapolate information and that he can interpolate when he has unconnected material. Second is the compatibility problem. How do you get a child to approach new material that he is learning in such a fashion that he fits it into his own system of associations, subdivisions, categories and frame of reference in order that he can make it his own and thus be able to use the information in a fashion compatible with what he already knows? Third involves getting the child activated so that he can experience his own capacity to solve problems and have enough success so that he can feel rewarded for the exercise of thinking. Fourth is giving the child practice in the skills related to the use of information and problem solving. The great problem here is how do you give the child practice in the utilization of these skills? Because it turns out that however often you may set forth general ideas, and as the student has an opportunity to use them, he's not going to be very effective in their use. Fifth is a special kind of problem called the safe loop problem. The child in learning in school settings will very frequently do kind of things which he is not able to describe to himself. Psychologists see this all the time. Children who are able to do many kinds of things, for example, to handle a balanced beam quite adequately by putting rings on nails on both sides of a fulcrum and getting quite interesting balances, but are not able to say it to themselves and convert this fact into a compact notation which they could hold in mind. The sixth problem involves the nature of a child's capacity for handling information flow manageably so that it can be used in problem solving. Brunner believed that curriculum should foster the development of problem-solving skills through the processes of inquiry and discovery. He also believed that subject matter should be represented in terms of the child's way of viewing the world. He also advocated teaching by organizing concepts and learning by discovery. And finally, the curriculum should be designed so that the master of skills lead to the master of still more powerful skills.